This lecture is a lecture on the modified nodal analysis. As the name indicates, this is a modification of the traditional nodal analysis method that we've learned so far in circuits one. And the traditional nodal analysis uh, would have us identify all the nodes in the network. Then we would pick uh, a reference node. This reference node would default to ground if ground uh, existed in the network. Otherwise, we choose an arbitrary node. We would label that as our reference node or zero volts. After uh, labeling the remaining non-reference nodes in the network, we would have a total of n minus one unknowns, for which we would form the equations by first constraining the node voltage. Uh, node voltages by any voltage sources in the networks. We call these our voltage constraints. Then we would also enforce KCL about all non-reference nodes that are not connected to a voltage source. If we have nodes connected to a voltage source, we would, could not uh, def apply KCL directly there. Why? Because we could not predict uh, the current to that source since it would be unknown. Rather, if we have any voltage sources in the network uh, not connected to a reference node, we would have to then form a super node, which is a, uh, a surface that would bound that voltage source and its two nodes, um, and then enforce KCL about, that super about the super node. Finally, this would give us our n minus one equations, which we could solve for. The Advantages of a nodal analysis, if I were going to write a computer program to do an automated circuit analysis, um, would be that it's very easy to identify the nodes in the network. It's also very easy to identify a reference node. In fact, if ground is defined in the network, that becomes our reference node. Otherwise, we just choose an arbitrary reference node. Uh, this is unlike trying to automate a, a loop analysis, which would force us to find all the uh, automatically find all the loops in the network and identify them the minimum number of those that um, uh, would cross all branches. Uh, we call that there are independent loops and this would require a search algorithm and also um, uh, would require higher level complexity for three-dimensional networks to identify the genus of the network. Um, so clearly nodal analysis would be much easier to implement from that standpoint of view. But the disadvantage of a nodal analysis is that if I have voltage sources, uh, I would have to form a super node. And again, that would take um, um, you know, some graph theory to make sure that these, these cuts are being done correctly. Um, the other thing that is not that apparent to you at this point is if I, if I introduce super nodes, I also introduce uh, asymmetry into the matrix, that is that um, the transpose of the matrix would not be equal to itself. Uh, and from a computational standpoint of view, if it's symmetric, I only need to store half the matrix. So I really need to store things to the right of the uh, diagonal terms, for example. Well, this motivated a group at TJ Watson Research Labs back in the 70s uh, who were automating um, circuit analysis tools to come up with what's called a modified nodal analysis. And this would circumvent uh, the, the disadvantages of the nodal analysis. And really the modified nodal analysis has just really some very small differences compared to the nodal analysis. So here, here I have the steps of a modified nodal analysis. And really there's just two um, distinct differences. And the first is, is after we, you know, identify our nodes, and label our nodes, our, our non-reference nodes on a reference node. Um, we then are going to introduce a branch current as an unknown for every voltage source. So at any voltage source in the network, I'm going to introduce an unknown branch current on that branch. Um, if I was doing a transient analysis, I would also do this for uh, any branch containing an inductor, uh, which has a voltage that's proportional to the time derivative of the current on that branch. Then we would proceed as normal. Uh, you know, we identify controlling values control of, um, uh, of controlled sources as a function of either branch, uh, branch these new branch currents we introduce or the node voltages. Um, 
As we set up equations, we do our voltage constraints as per normal, that would not change. These still constrain known voltages. But now, because of introducing these branch currents, I can apply KCL about all non-reference nodes. So we eliminate the need to have a super node. The cost of that is I have some additional nodes. Now the number of equations I need, and the number of nodes I have is N minus one, or the number of non-reference nodes, plus the number of voltage sources in the network. But that would though um, eliminate the need for super nodes. It would also lead to a symmetric system uh, for a passive type network. Okay, so let's look at an example of a modified nodal analysis. And so here we have the circuit, which has two current sources as a voltage source. And of course, we have a ground define, which helps us identify a reference node. If I look at the network, I have, uh, it's easily identified that I have four nodes in this network, and we can choose a reference node, which is gonna be ground. And then we can uh, identify they have uh, three uh, remaining non-reference nodes. As we label our uh, node voltages, we label our ground as zero volts, uh, as per normal. So nothing's changed yet from a, from a nodal analysis. But what I do notice is that I have a voltage source, and I'm going to assign the source a current. So I'll just assign it a current. I'll call it IBA. Uh, I choose the current flowing into the high potential of voltage. It doesn't matter. It can also fly, uh, flow into the low potential. Um, the only thing that matters is I just assign a direction for this current, and once it's assigned, I leave it. And so I have it assigned flowing to the left. And if I happen to choose the wrong direction, then this current will be negative of, uh, of what it is. So I don't worry about that. The equations will work out the sign. Okay, so now I have a total of, of uh, four unknowns, so I need four equations. To get these equations, I first start with my voltage constraints. So I have one voltage source, and I see across this volt, voltage source that VB minus VA must be equal to six volts. So the source constrains the, the two node voltages, VB and VA. Okay, I'm done with my voltage constraints. Now I have to apply KCL. Now in an MNA, because I've introduced this source current, we'll see that I can now apply KCL at all nodes, not just uh, nodes not connected to a, um, uh, a voltage source. When I say all nodes, I mean all non-reference nodes. So I can apply a KCL to all non-reference nodes. So we can simply start here at node A. So at node A, I have three branches. Now I'm gonna force that the net current flowing out of this node, and these three branches sums to zero. But now even though this branch to the right contains a voltage source, I now have a current assigned to that branch. So as I, I write down my KCL, and of course I can write KCL flowing out of the upper branch, which is a minus two amps. But the KCL, for KCL, the current flowing out into the six volt source, I now call a minus IBA. So this is flowing uh, opposite of the direction of IBA. Plus the current flowing through the half ohm resistor is VA minus zero over 0.5. And these all sum to zero. So the difference in the MNA now is I can, I can write down the current of the voltage source as, as an unknown uh, here, but this is minus IB flowing to the right. Okay. For node B, again, I find the net current flowing out sums to zero. Current flowing to the left is IBA, so I can write that current down. It's unknown, but I still express that as a current flowing out. Uh, Going down, I have VB minus zero over 0.5 ohms, and VB minus VC over 0.5 ohms. Other currents flowing out of the two branches, and these sum to zero. Finally, node C, I have two amps flowing up. VC minus VB over half an ohm flowing to the left, and minus four amps flowing down. This is going against that current source. So at this point, now I have one voltage constraint that's corresponding to one voltage source three KCL equations corresponding to three node voltages, and therefore I have three plus one, or a total of four equations for my four nodes. That gives me enough equations to solve uniquely for uh, the node voltages and the source current. So here I just plug these equations into um, uh, a MathCAD worksheet. So 
I have my four equations. And then I use MathCAD here using a solve block uh, to with a find statement to solve. And I find that VA is minus two volts. And I find that VB, VB is four volts. And of course, four minus minus two gives me my six volt drop. VC is five volts. And I find that IBA is a minus six amps. And so of course the current is flowing to the right. So this is the source indeed is producing power. So once I have calculated my node voltages and my uh, voltage source current, I can now apply Ohm's law and or KCL to compute all branch currents in the network. And this problem uh, would be solved. That is, I can do, find any, any quantity I would like in this network now. So that's an example of an m &A. Um, If we resolve this using the nodal analysis, which we're familiar with, the difference is, is that um, I would have to uh, express a supernode. Why? Because I could not use KCL about node A, because I don't know what that current is. I could not do it about node B. Rather, I would have to form a supernode and constrain the currents flowing out of the supernode sum to zero. Okay, that's a normal nodal analysis, which obviously still works. Um, and in doing so, again, I find that uh, VA is minus two volts, VB is four volts, and VC is five volts. So I have arrived at exactly the same answer as, as I would expect. And if I wanted to know the source current, then of course I could find you know the voltage across uh, you know flowing out on this point five and so uh, the ohm resistor voltage flowing down here on this one of course this is eight amps and here I have four minus five minus one divided by two sub minus two amps um, and then I would find that IBA is flowing here and it looks like I have six amps flowing out by KCL which would check. Okay. So this is our example of how to apply a modified nodal analysis. Now again, this is another analysis tool uh, to put in our toolbox. This is the method used by the majority of circuit simulations, uh, CAD softwares, uh, such as the Cadence software that we, that we will use in this class, um, which has what's called the Berkeley Spice engine um, underneath it, which is based on a Modified nodal analysis, which is much easier to implement in software than a state of nodal analysis or a, um, a loop analysis. And that ends this lecture. <laughs>